Chapter 18 of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18, in which Claude gives an exhibition in diving and is taken prisoner. On the following morning, nothing would satisfy Claude and Willie but to go fishing again. I wouldn't trust you two in a boat for the world, said Frank but frank we don't need a boat argued claude willie and i know a spot beyond buck island where it's deep near the shore and we can walk there and fish without any boat will you be sure to take good care of yourselves oh of course said claude lightly what idea claude had of the meaning of to take care of himself it is impossible for me to say so the two set bravely forth established themselves on the bank and after two hours had secured nothing to reward their efforts hello exclaimed willie here come the same crowd that was fishing yesterday they won't have worse luck than we've had observed claude say let's take a swim all right assented willie and throwing their lines on the bank the two undressed and were soon disporting in the water look where they've anchored cried willie presently claude looked and sounding a note of triumph ran out of the water and with nothing on but his swimming tights disappeared among the trees willie wondering what would happen next proceeded to put on his clothes the young men in the boat had chosen for their fishing grounds a deep place very close to land they were anchored in the shadow of a huge tree which inclined toward the waters at a sharp angle in such wise that its outer branches reached out almost over their heads i hope we'll have better luck than we had last evening said cleary the leader of the party it can't be worse commented Allen i suggest to begin with that we all keep perfectly quiet growled graham that's business put in riley the last of the party then they cast in silence and waited patiently and their patience was soon rewarded Allen landed a fine oswego bass within five minutes didn't you hear a strange noise just now whispered Allen a moment later where asked graham up in that tree at the word there was a vigorous hi hi whoop and straight as an arrow there flashed before their astounded eyes a white form that with hands clasped before the head came shooting from the tree almost directly over their boat into the water with a great splash well that beats chicago exclaimed cleary claude bobbed up smiling what's your luck he exclaimed lying on his back and kicking his feet so as to splash the party get away from here you little beggar bawled graham you're spoiling our fishing oh you needn't mind me said claude striking for the shore i'm only going to take a few more dives off that tree and claude without delay began climbing the tree with an agility which certainly astonished the discomfited fisherman i never saw such cheek said Allen. it's monumental added graham so's his climbing he's up that tree already he's a cat or a monkey hi hi screamed claude springing into the air and flashing before their eyes really boys it paralyzes one such coolness as that said Allen talk about chicago if that fellow cares about coming to live in our city he'll own it before he comes of age but what an athlete he is if i were to try to dive from that branch as he does i'd die of fright even if i didn't get hurt otherwise that's all very well growled cleary rubbing away the water which claude had just splashed into his eyes that we four don't intend to be made fools of by one small boy there he goes to shore now and he'll climb that tree again and drop on us like a bolt from the blue just as soon as he reaches the branch i'll lift the anchor quietly and when he dives you fellows have the oars ready and we'll capture him and bring him back to the menagerie he escaped from 
when claude emerged from the water after his third dive he saw the oarsmen putting their oars in the rowlocks and at once made for the shore with a strong overhand stroke but before he could reach the land the firm hand of alan was about his neck and after a succession of writhings and kickings and strugglings which inspired alan with high respect for claude's strength and energy the audacious diver was a captive now youngster began cleary as he brought the wriggler into the boat where are your clothes down there said claude pointing toward gentle willie who with staring eyes was taking in the plight of his companion claude as he spoke gave a fresh wriggle and nearly succeeded in getting over the side of the boat did any of you fellows ever catch eels asked cleary i've caught them often said riley well come down here and hold this fellow he's worse than any eel i give up said claude in his matter-of-fact way till you bring me my clothes cleary looked into his eyes i believe you he said and releasing his hold he turned the boat toward the spot where stood master willie whereupon that faithful friend took to his heels only stopping at the house of mr collins to state that claude had been half drowned by a lot of roughs and that they were now about to tar and feather him then he made on to tell elmwood how claude when he last saw him had been screaming help murder at the top of his voice on reaching shore claude hurried into his clothes which he had left at the foot of a tree bending down he finally put on his stockings then with a leap he caught one of the branches and swung himself up out of reach before a single one of his guards could reach him do you intend to wait he inquired grinning down at them cleary looked at graham then both burst into a roar of laughter young one said cleary we surrender claude laughed let's all be friends he said that's a bargain tell us who you are i'm claude lightfoot from milwaukee and i go to milwaukee college claude as he spoke leaped easily to the ground did you get all your cheek there no i brought that along here shake hands and claude saluted each one in the american way with great gravity i want to say one thing lightfoot said cleary this thing has turned out well for you but it's a dangerous thing sometimes for small boys to take such liberties as you have taken you might have fallen upon a hard crowd and they would have injured you claude was puzzled the little fellow beyond the cruel experience he had had with worden knew nothing of the world or its wickedness his life had been cast in an atmosphere of innocence and the readings katie had selected for him were all of lofty ideals and noble deeds the term bad company and its danger had no real meaning for him he knew his own faults failings and sins he did not realize that others were far worse than himself as regards willie hardy he had first been staggered but had finally come to the conclusion that as soon as willie opened his mouth to speak he ceased to be responsible the world took on roseate hues to this happy-go-lucky it transpired in the course of the conversation that the four chicago boys were attending a catholic college of that city and claude had quite ingratiated himself into their favor when behold with baseball bats and walking canes and the heaviest joint of a fishing pole frank john rob collins pearson and dockery came racing down upon them hello cried frank checking himself suddenly i thought we were on a scalping tour and it looks more like smoking the pipe of peace where are the tar and feathers d immortales shouted rob that young perfume box has undone us again i thought he was telling the truth this time for when he spoke to me the tears were standing in his eyes when we get back we'll tar and feather him said frank claude who are your friends 
bats and fish-poles and walking-sticks were thrown aside and the rival parties were soon on the most friendly footing i hope we didn't offend you by our conduct last evening said frank not at all answered riley we began the chaffing ourselves no you didn't said rob that wretched little perfume box began it all yes assented frank and when one of you made some remark about our cheek we had to keep it up but now you must come over and help us out with our fish that's a fact said graham you fellows can't begin to eat eight big fish whereupon there was a roar and as the party moved toward camp frank explained his secret well that's one on chicago said riley willie all smiles and bows was awaiting them i dare not chronicle the animadversions which his companions passed upon him but willie's cheeks lost not their color nor his eyes their brightness as he responded over and over it was a joke End of chapter 18